Hi, I'm Shelley. And I'm Kate. And you're listening to One Lamp or Two, the boldest breast cancer podcast yet. Join us each week as we offer an intimate glimpse into the challenges and triumphs of facing breast cancer head on in our 30s. In series two, we're going to be joined by you, our listeners, and some experts in the field to help us all feel a little less alone and a lot more informed. Now, let's pull back that curtain and dive in. Hello. Hello. We're back. We're back. Have you missed us? We weren't gone for long. No. Well, actually, by the time this comes out, it might be <laughs> months. It might be months. We took about a month off recording. Yeah. And then you're hearing from us maybe like six months later. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't be that long. Kate's too organised for that. No, it won't be that long. We've just got many ideas to work through. We've got a lot of ideas for season two, and it's going to be amazing, and you're definitely all going to love it. Before we talk about season two, what's new <laughs> um I guess a fair few things in the last month I have been well <laughs> I was dating past tense uh this guy who will remain nameless but we had high hopes for we had high hopes for him um classic I don't I mean <laughs> we may you mentioned well. him <laughs> yeah yeah in like episode eight or nine I was like, I don't want to, like, say anything too good in case, like, this doesn't work out. And surprise, surprise, <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> it was going really well, though. It was until he told me he was moving to Manchester. But he hadn't told me that before, so cheers, hon. Yeah. And I ain't looking for that long-distance shit. No, it's too much effort. Plus, like, what was he really adding to my life? Nothing. Stress. Yeah. Although, so we went on... About seven dates. That's a good going. Yeah. For, I mean, for me, yeah. That's the most I've been on in quite some time. Because you've had with a, the same a string of first dates, didn't you? Yeah. And so he was, he lasted longer than anyone else has recently, which is, you know, props to him, props to me. And we did have sex of sorts. Okay, wait, actually, <laughs> can I just, I just want to say... Mum and Dad, I know you're probably listening, so actually just turn off now for about five minutes because I don't think you want to hear this. Um, we had sex. Okay. Ex- you said sex of sorts and you sounded really unsure if that's actually what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, so f- we didn't really like, there was not really any penetration. Okay. My vagina was not playing ball. But never fear because... I have now given Shelley some yes vaginal moisturizer. Kate gave me a vaginal moisturizer. I've not started using it yet because shortly after that we broke <laughs> broke up's a strong word. We stopped seeing each other, so maybe it wasn't no, it wasn't that. Um It will work when when the time comes. Yeah. But basically we did other stuff which was fine. It was it was good. And actually so it was something I was really, really worried about because mm-hmm. obviously I've only got one boob, my body's changed massively, and I've been nervous to have sex kind of for quite a long long time now obviously yeah Yeah. so but it was nice I think it helped my confidence in terms of like having sex again in the future I kept my t-shirt on the whole time which for me was quite important I just wasn't I just wasn't ready I wasn't comfortable and was he respectful of very very respectful if I mean if he wasn't like it would have been done well done and dusted there and there yeah nah so he was very respectful. I kept my T-shirt on the whole time. He didn't even try and take it off. But I'd, I'd kind of, we'd spoken about it a lot. Not a lot, but like, not, not like every single conversation <laughs> we're talking about sex. <laughs> Obviously not. I've got like the libido of a like 90-year-old. So we had spoken about it. And he was, yeah, he was very respectful of what I was going through and everything like that. And we did try and put the penis inside the vagina. And it just... The vagina was just, Just it was like... Closed for business. Yeah, like literally like barely the tip went in and I was like, nope, you're going to have to stop. Yeah, Which... That's the position we were in. It was, I just didn't expect it to be so uncomfortable. Like like it was painful. I think it's because all of the skin down there, which is normally quite elastic. It's very... Is not anymore. It's got no estrogen feeding it. So it's... It's got no elasticity. Yeah. It's dry as a bone. Yeah. Use the moisturiser, it will help. Yeah. I use it every day now. Mm. Um, and I'm just infinitely more comfortable yeah. in general. And we've had sex three times. 
oh my god yeah have you actually yeah and it worked yeah every single time i've cried <laughs> did the penis go in the vagina it went in <laughs> every time i've cried but oh no in... oh no <laughs> sorry i only just registered that. what you'd said then yeah. but more, sex and then i immediately cried more in like a relief oh my god we're here way because right, okay. i think i'd reached a point where i thought it was never Not gonna like happen again so much pain no no no, okay. no pain okay, it's good. been a little bit uncomfortable initially like if i'm not fully relaxed into it because i'm too busy in my head being worried it's still tight i and think it still hurts a lot of that was i think it's the anxiety yeah. and the like knowledge that it's gonna be painful which yeah. is kind of like and because I, I don't i mean obviously I'm, I'm just diagnosing myself um i don't know if i've got like a bit of vaginismus which is basically where yeah. like your vagina does is it's just a little bit like nah nothing's going in i think from talking to the sexual health lady i think i definitely have and it, i think it's because i was in this cycle of desperately trying but getting hurt mm-hmm. so like my body's essentially conditioned itself to expect the fear the pain, yeah. and the pain and getting past that and relaxing is really hard. But as soon as I'm relaxed, not a problem. It's completely fine. It's great. It's amazing. I think Shane now thinks we should be having sex all the time. And I'm still a bit like, mm. So you've had sex three times? Three times, in, yeah. In what kind of time period? Uh, maybe since February. So like once a month. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. It's really I mean, I good. think it's pretty good. One of my probably new resolutions if was you're... twice a month. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you're listening, you're probably thinking once a month. Fucking hell. <laughs> that's not a lot. After months of nothing, that's great. Yeah. I'm, I think I need to make more of an effort to initiate us having sex. I'm not yeah, very good at that. Yeah, but it's difficult when you're not, not necessarily in the, mood. in the mood for it. Yeah. And it takes so long to be like, I do want to do this because I love him and I need my body to understand that it's not going to hurt. Like, it's... Also, you want enjoyment from... Yeah. Like, it's not just about him, it's about you. Like, you want to have enjoyment from sex as well. If I'm not relaxed. And then I'm... Then I get scared of, like, the the opposite happening and then having a bad experience after some good experiences and then that undoing Mm -hmm. progress. Um, I don't know if it works like that, but, I mean, we've both kind of had sex, so go us. Well done. Who knew 2024 would be the year? <laughs> Did you have an orgasm? No. Oh. I haven't been at it long enough because I... I after do you do other minutes, stuff though? Yeah. Does he I take think, care of your needs? <laughs> oh, more than. More than. Good. But I think I... I think I'm just getting too in my head and yeah. too scared about mm-hmm. it all. And then I keep being like, no, 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 stop now. Because I can feel myself winding myself up. Yeah. And like being scared that he's going to do something that all her and not not deliberately obviously yeah, yeah yeah um not nice for him when i'm wincing or mm-hmm. like moving away because i'm i'm anticipating pain but progress is progress onwards and upwards look at us i know we both kind of had sex yeah it's great it's the first time i'd had sex for uh four three three years let's say three doesn't wow. sound as bad we need to find you a new man and you can get on it all the time oh, I'm, o- I'm over it that's another <laughs> update of mine i'm over it you're over it i'm over it are i you, can't you like actually over it or i mean until... i'm still on hinge but i'm not actively like talking to anybody swiping. people just people just like me and then i reject them no that's, <laughs> that's not that's really not what's happening <laughs> i get like one or two <laughs> likes a day maybe and <laughs> just flooded with likes and comments and i'm just I just can't be asked. like, to be honest, it's just, I mean, I, pro- I say that now, but I probably will be back on it soon, but I think I just needed a bit of a break after that. I think I was just so irritated that, like, the one time it kind of looks promising, it was just like, but nice. yeah. you did meet someone and you did date someone yeah. successfully while it was Semi- happening. successfully or um, so. And you know, you were worried that you weren't going to find anyone. Yeah. So he might not be the one, but he definitely you found someone and someone that accepted you for for you mm-hmm. until he decided to move to Manchester. Um, Without it, saying anything. Sure, it has no bearing on you at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have sex and he goes, actually, I'm moving home. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. In a non-sex and dating related update... I am doing the copper truck this year, nice. which is in the Himalayas, which I am very excited about, but also nervous about 
because I went on an eight mile walk this weekend, which isn't even that far. So it basically it's going to be around 100 kilometers over five days. So 20 kilometers a day. Oh my God. But like up as up and down a mountain as well. Like okay. it's the Himalayas. It's a lot. And I went on an eight mile walk at the weekend and I came home and I was dead. So what, 20 kilometers is like... It's about 15, 15 miles. miles a day? Yeah. So basically... You're halfway there then. Yeah. But I was honestly, okay, I was... Uh, my ankles were hurting, my knees oh, were hurting, no. my hips were hurting. I think I didn't really think about it hurting. <laughs> Even though, like, it's funny because, because I, like, I think you are, it's like, we're both in pain every day mm-hmm. from, like, yeah. menopause and all other stuff. That I don't think about it anymore. It's just always there. Yeah, That's like, you life. know what your normal level yeah. of pain is, so you don't pay attention to it. You yeah. only notice it when it's more. Yeah, so it was very much heightened when I came back from the walk and I was hobbling around the kitchen trying to like cook myself some dinner and I was just like it was the first time I was a bit like oh my god what have I done but no it's gonna be fantastic and I am really looking forward to it I just need to do some some training I need to get some proper walking boots yeah I need to get all the gear and no idea (laughs) (laughs) but it's I'm raising loads of money hopefully so the target is three thousand six hundred pounds okay i've raised just over a thousand so nice. far i've been doing some really fun events if you're listening and you think wow shelly that's cool please donate because i have loads of money that i need to raise and it's all for copperfield who are such an amazing charity and we've they linked really them are. on our link tree and we've yeah. mentioned about them before and i do a lot of kind of volunteer work for them as well and i just love them so much Oh, and another exciting thing about the trek is there's celebrity captains. Ooh. And one of them is going to be Pete Wicks. Ooh. And I am buzzing. And if you don't know who Pete Wicks is, Google him. He is right up my street. I think he's right up a lot of people's streets. Well, you're going to have to keep us updated on how your training's going. Yeah. Because what, you've got six months? Seven months. Seven months. Seven months. Which is not which is plenty it's of time. a really long time, but we've been trying to run 5K for so nearly I'm... a year now. <laughs> How long did we run for today? About three minutes. 400 metres? <laughs> yeah. We decided today we were getting a bit bored because we've just been getting nowhere. Mainly because we've just been really inconsistent with it. But I think we are just getting a bit a bit bored of trying to do 5k and failing. Yeah. So today we were like, oh, let's do, let's walk a K, run a K, walk a K, run a K, walk a K. We walked a K, ran 400 metres, <laughs> walked the rest. <laughs> But it's movement, and that's what counts. And we were power walking. We We weren't just, like, bimbling along. Bimbling. Is that a word? I don't know. It's now. Bumbling along? Yeah, it was a power walk. And some say that that's actually Mm -hmm. better than running. Yeah. So don't come at us. We covered 4K anyway, so... Yeah. I mean... Not quite the 5K we were hoping, but I needed a poo. I had to rush home. (laughs) Yet another side effect of treatments and stuff. Just poo. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> anyway, should we move on? Donate to Shelley's cup of tea. Donate! <laughs> so, shall we explain what we're going to do with, I guess, season two? So, the plan is to be talking to you, our listeners, Mm -hmm. to talk to charities that can offer support or charities that are conducting research into cancer, not just breast cancer. We're spreading our wings far and wide to other cancers. We want you and your stories, so come and talk to us if you'd like to. (laughs) Yeah. The platform is yours. Um, Absolutely. We have had some really nice messages that have confirmed that we're doing the right thing like we sat down when we started this and said that as long as we reached one person that wasn't our mum and our dad (laughs) and it helped them then we'd consider it a success yeah and we've had at least one message telling us that we've reached them and they feel less so many messages (laughs) um so it's working so if we've helped you feel less lonely and you would like to help someone else feel less lonely we're happy to lend our platform and we're happy for you to come and chat to us and share your story. If you've got an idea of people you would like to hear from, then also let us know. We're going to talk to a lot of charities, a lot of people who work in the research. We're going to try and get in touch with some surgeons as well. We've got some fantastic guests. Yeah, we have. On the list. On the list. You're going to be buzzing. 
Fingers crossed, it all comes to fruition. <laughs> and also, we've got a couple of wild card ideas in there as well. We have got some wild um, card ideas. <laughs> just some stupid ideas we've had in the car, and we're going to make a stupid case. They're not stupid. They're great they're not, ideas. They're great ideas. <laughs> so keep listening. Season two is going to be better than season one, if that's even possible. I don't think that's possible. Season one was fantastic. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what's to come some fantastic guests and you're all going to be absolutely buzzing by the lineup like a little, little festival lineup <laughs> but make sure you're make sure you follow along every week bye bye <laughs> if you want to share your story we'd love to hear from you whether you've had cancer you know someone that's had cancer or you just love listening to our voices slide into our dms on instagram at one lump underscore or two or email us at one love or two pod at gmail.com see you next week bye